All right, let's do it. Um, looking all sounds good. All right, so we're going to, I've got some fascinating documents here. We are going to look into, again, continuing our series on uh, the history of Wisconsin equal uh, rights laws in the workplace. We are going to look at statements of religious leaders concerning homosexuality uh, in the workplace, meaning is it uh, should it be against the law to discriminate against uh, what they the term that they were using at that time was homosexuals in the workplace. Um, so this is fascinating here. These are documents from uh, different religious sects to uh, this various uh, legislators on this subject here. So the big question. Uh, we should all be asking ourselves is what uh, what do you think your religion, uh, if you have one, says? And what do you think, um, do you think they'll still hold that position today? So let's find out. All right. All right. So this is Archdiocese of Milwaukee, uh, 81. And this is Rembert Weekland. Uh, as far as I know, he became a straight up cardinal. He's already archbishop then. All right. It has been called to my attention that your office has been seeking my opinion on the uh, assembly bill. I feel that your commission can in good conscience support this legislation insofar as it bans discrimination because of sexual orientation in the areas of employment, housing, and public accommodations. You will recall that the National Conference of Catholic Bishops spoke to this issue in 1976. There has been no change in the Catholic position concerning homosexual activity, which has always been considered as morally wrong. On the other hand, it has also been consistent with Catholic teaching that homosexuals should not be deprived of their basic human rights. For this reason, I feel that support of this bill would be indeed proper and consistent with the previous positions the church has taken. Many thanks for your consist constant concern so for so many delicate issues. Interesting last words. All right. Here are the Lutherans. Who is this from? Somebody I've never heard of. A.C. Schumacher, president. It's just interesting on the titles of the American Lutheran Church. Thank you for your concern. Regarding AB70, since I am not able to be there, and it's hard for anyone to represent me, you must, you may use the following, which is the statement which Wisconsin's Conference of Churches asked jurisdictions which care to support the bill to authorize. Yikes. <laughs> Our district council has authorized to in indicate support for Assembly Bill 70. If deemed necessary, I would be willing to appear and speak at any hearing on this bill. I am sending a copy of this letter to John Fisher, Executive Director of the Wisconsin Conference of Churches, so he can resent me, represent me at a hearing. This should be adequate, shouldn't it? <laughs> All right. That sounds like he he's really wants to do this. <laughs> All right. Here we have the Methodists. Oh, I would have never thought they were in Sun Prairie, but okay. It's near Madison, not Milwaukee. Dear friends, at a recent meeting of the Board of Directors of Wisconsin Conference of Churches, a number of the church leadership on various churches in Wisconsin signed a statement in support of this bill prohibiting discrimination based on secular orientation of individuals in the area of employment, housing, and public accommodation. I'm impressed by this paragraph. And the social principles of the United Methodist Church, adopted by the 1980 General Conference, the United Methodist Church reaffirmed its position with regard to the worth of all persons, regardless of sexual orientation. Following is a quotation from the Statement on Human Sexuality. Homosexual persons possess no less heteros than heterosexual persons are individuals of sacred worth. I'm going to start that again. Homosexual persons no less than heterosexual persons are individuals of sacred worth who need the ministry and guidance of the church in their struggles for human fulfillment, as well as the spiritual and emotional care of a fellowship which enables recon reconciling relationships with God, with others, and with self. Damn, that's some good writing. Uh, further, we insist that all persons are entitled to have their human and civil rights insured, though we do not condone the practice of homosexuality and consider this practice incompatible with Christian teachings. Got it. The only body that can speak for the entire United Methodist Church is the General Conference, which meets quadrennially. 
However, as an elected bishop assigned to the Wisconsin Conference of the United Methodist Church, I personally support the proposed legislation and urge its consideration by the members of the Wisconsin State Legislature. Sincerely, Marjorie Matthews. Wow. I, it, it, in many ways, it does seem like, um, socially speaking, we have gone backwards in, in, in many ways. Um, but that was extremely well written from my point of view. Uh, oh, the Presbyterians. Let's see what they have to say. The United Presbyterian Church in the USA. They're downtown Milwaukee. All right. The Reverend Carl Simon, executive presbyter. All right. <laughs> presbyter. Dear friends, at the recent meeting of the board of directors of the Wisconsin Conference of Churches, a number of bishops... Presidents and leaders of the various churches signed a collective statement in support of the bill prohibiting discrimination based on sexual orientation of individuals in the area of employment, housing, and public accommodations. Our corporate action is similar to that which the religious leaders of eight member judiciatories of the greater Milwaukee area took in support of a Milwaukee city ordinance banning discrimination in employment based on sexual orientation. Wow, I wonder what happened to that. At that time, we said, we support equal protection of the law for all people, including full civil rights for persons of homosexual orientation. We support the recently passed Milwaukee ordinance banning discrimination in employment based on sexual orientation because it's consistent with such full legal protections and full civil rights for all people. As pastoral leaders in the community, we ask for our constituents to join us in this support. All right, we'll keep going. May I quote the text of a resolution adopted by a General Assembly meeting in San Diego, California, 1978? The Christian community can neither condone nor participate in the widespread contempt for homosexual pre persons that prevails in our general culture. Indeed, beyond this, it must do everything in its power to prevent society from continuing to hate, harass, and oppress them. There is no legal, social, or moral justification for denying homosexual persons access to basic requirements of a human social existence. Society does not have a legitimate role in regulating some sexual conduct for criminal law properly functions to preserve public order and decency and to protect citizens from public offenses, personal injury, and exploitation. Thus, criminal law properly prohibits homosexuals and heterosexual acts that involve certain, um, certain acts. However, homosexual and heterosexual acts in private between consenting adults involve none of the legitimate interests in society. Sex, uh, conduct in private between consenting adults is a matter of private morality to be instructed by religious precept or ethical example and persuasion rather than legal coercion. What's fascinating about that, and if you'll pardon the um, interruption here, is simply this. This is 1981, and it's not really until 30-odd um, uh, years later with the Supreme Court uh, case on Texas uh, regarding um, consenting uh, activities between the criminal prosecution of consenting adults and uh which outlawed it, that then I think the rest of society and certain corporate culture followed suit. So I think this is absolutely fascinating that it doesn't really matter and says what the Milwaukee Common Council says, but take that back. Um, I do take that back because but for, I think, the Milwaukee Common Council taking this action and but for this letter that 30 odd years later, the Supreme court wouldn't have uh, agreed with them. So I do take that back, but I think that it's, uh, it's fascinating with when the, when the Supreme court says something, how everybody gets in line with that, which is, I mean, in theory, what's supposed to happen, but it's fascinating that it does or to whatever extent it does. The Baptist state convention, this one's pretty quick here.
All right. That statement reiterates that God loves every person and that we are therefore not free to reject any person regardless of our personal opinions. Further, it is incumbent on us to defend the civil rights of all. I therefore leave my personal support to Assembly Bill uh, 70 insofar as it bans discrimination because of sexual orientation in the above-named categories. All right. Um, there's, there is way, there's, of course, other people have got other views here. Um, so if you, we'll pause for a second and find some of those. <clears throat> All right. Here is a letter from the governor of Wisconsin, uh, Lee Sherman Dreyfus, a uh, Republican who signed this bill, uh, 1981. And, uh, let's see his reasons justifying. There was, um, some, re- there was uh, campaigns on both sides, uh, calling on the governor not to sign this bill. Um, so let's see what happened. I, I'm almost positive that the legislator was completely blue for, of course, they didn't call it that at that time, but I'm completely positive. But could be wrong. AB 70 prohibits discrimination in employment, housing, and public accommodations based on sexual orientation. This bill has a controversial history, and my office has been under heavy pressure to veto it. It is also, however, has the support of a wide-ranging group of religi- religious leadership. We just read that including the uh, leadership of the Roman Catholic Church, several Lutheran synods, and the Jewish community. I couldn't find the Jewish one in here, but um, I'm assured it was. I have decided to sign this bill for one basic reason, to protect one's right to privacy. As one who believes in the fundamental Republican principles that government should have a very restricted involvement in people's private and personal lives, I feel strongly about governmentally sanctioned inquiry into an individual's thoughts, beliefs, and feeling. Discrimination on sexual preference is allowed, clearly must allow inquiries into one's private life that go beyond reasonable inquiry and, in fact, invade one's privacy. I kind of think the opposite would be true. Wow, that's interesting to think. Let's. I'm going to... We're going to unpack that second, but I think we need to we need to think about that. All right. So he's saying if we allow discrimination based on sexual preference, then ba- then I think um, then we will allow employers to basically test people for on their homosexuality. That's what I get. Okay, and we don't want that to happen. The way I'm looking at it is if we outlaw discrimination, people who file suits for homosexual will have to show that they are members of a protected class to move forward and invade one's privacy. But I think uh, I get that now. No one ought to have the right and no one ought to be placed in the position of having to reveal such personal information when it is not directly related to an overriding public purpose. I wonder if that's sort of uh, don't ask, don't tell. Um, in other words, be certain to understand that a clear and stated intent expressed by the legislature is that this public policy will not require affirmative actions or quotas. And that was vital <clears throat> to my decision to sign this bill. So my guess is that there was some talk of that, but that got nixed here in the negotiations. I was also influenced by the fact that Madison... Dane County and the city of Milwaukee have ordinances similar to this legislation. The problems associated then with which many predicted just have not arisen. Oh, we got to close on that one. Um, Let me firmly state that this restriction on discriminatory actions or decisions does not imply approval or encouragement any more than the restrictions on discrimination because of religion or creed implies approval or encouragement of certain religions or creeds. This is, I just want to be clear because others have said that and we've noticed that in the um, religious letters here. Some are clearly like we hate the sin, but we don't hate the sinner. And this is sort of a mirror of that. It's saying support for this bill is not support for sin. I, I think that's what I got from that, which I don't know how you feel about that, but that's that I think is what he's saying there. I feel very strongly that one's sexual preferences, either heterosexual or heterosexual, have absolutely no place for expression in our classrooms generally and should not be tolerated. All right. I guess that's Lee Dreyfus signing the Joker. 
Um, now, I am going to, when I save the worst for last, in my opinion, um, I am going to read, I guess, we call this a slippery slope argument, which is if you do this, then all these bad things are going to happen. And this is going to be the beginning of the end here. The slippery slope going down that way. Okay, so, um, yeah. All right, here's one editorial that I think is worth note. Uh, this is in support of the bill here. And uh, it's sort of, again, there's a flavor of we're going to condemn the sin, and but embrace the sinner. Um, but there's also another, is this privacy? Is this discrimination? What exactly are we fighting about? Should homosexuals have legal protection against discrimination? Governor Dreyfus and the state legislature deserve praise for con courageously confronting that socially explosive question and answering yes. Dreyfus has signed a law into uh, a law into law a bill that prohibits discrimination against homosexuals' employment, uh, housing, and public accommodation. This law is likely to provoke controversy, as the government noted. People who would not countenance discrimination on the grounds of race, sex, religion age or national origin often cannot find tolerance for homosexuals find tolerance for home often cannot find tolerance for homosexuals so that that I distinctly remember that uh, in the early you know when I grew up um, absolutely people were completely opposed to all of the forms of discrimination name but thought that um, homosexuals were abomination against God definitely heard that growing up However, the issue is not homosexuality. The issue is an unpardonable form of discrimination. As Dreyfus put it, the new law offers protection of the right to privacy and one's sexual preference and helps keep government involvement in the private lives very restricted by banning jo job and housing discrimination. All right. I, I think that was helpful there, um, and it sort of it sums up one reaction here, but we're going to get to the hot potato here. All right, this document's fascinating, even though it's to the exact extent that it's disgusting. Um, and I will have to wrap this up shortly. I appreciate all your time here. Uh, this is sort of like the original gra uh, uh, grassroots um, how to contact your legislator pamphlet here. Um, and so this is sort of give this to your neighbors or whatever and explain to them how to contact their legislator to complain. Okay? So go to the governor. It, it, and this is their, the proposal is to mail the governor at this address. <laughs> Suggested reasons for repeal, use any or all or use your own. Our government should not pass laws which seek to restrict or punish the majority of the population while giving special consideration to those whose behavior runs contrary to natural law. Government should respect the moral values of the majority. Law is unnecessary. Freedom for all is guaranteed by the Constitution of the United States. This not be guaranteed this law gives homosexuals special minority status and special privileges homosexuals should not be guaranteed a job or an apartment simply because they are homosexual they should have to compete in the job and housing markets like anybody else this is a moral issue not a civil rights issue there is no scientific evidence to support that constitutionally gay theory homosexuals are not born that way Homosexuality is a behavior and should not be classified with a legitimate minority such as race or sex. It's in their own words. We should be free to choose our association in moral areas. All right. Homosexual rights will be detrimental to the health, safety, and general welfare of our state. It will bring in more homosexuals who will in turn bring in more homosexuals. Presumably they'll bring in more. It will bring about a tremendous rise in the state VD rates, uh, venereal disease. Governor Earl has promised to fund VD clinics for homosexuals uh, paid for with our tax money. Uh, it seems unlikely, but okay. By the way, California, which has a vast homosexual population, around 20%, has a VD rate that is 22 times that of the national average. California taxpayers last year paid $20 million for treatment of homosexual v and D. VD. We can't afford this. Okay. Homosexual rights can be used to ensure the retention of known homosexuals as teachers, even if they talk openly about their lifestyles. Homosexuality is being taught as a normal variant and acceptable lifestyle. I think we've heard that 
elsewhere. Landlords must equally consider homosexuals as tenants, even in single-family dwellings which are owner-occupied, even if the landlord has children. Homosexuals, which comprise only 4 to 5 percent of our nation's population, are responsible for 38 percent of the... Oh, my goodness. I'll let you read that. I can't even say that out loud. I mean, not just because of, that's just too much. That is a high rate for only 5% of the population. If you still think that homosexuals pose no threat to children, consider the fact that the National Coalition of Gay Organizations, among others, have called for the repeal of all age of consent laws so they can legally yada yada. We'll keep going just for a brief second here. Firemen would be required by law to share sleeping and shower facilities with homosexuals. Businesses would possibly be forced to hire homosexuals, regardless of the public image he wishes his company to promote. Homosexuals and their sympathizers have gone to great lengths to convince the general public that those of us who are opposed to the homosexual lifestyle are afflicted with an illness called homophobia or fear of homosexuals. Remember, there is nothing wrong with us, but there is something wrong with them. Governor should honor this. All right, for more information, write Wisconsin Citizens Against Public Gay Perversion, New Franken, Wisconsin, 54229, Route 2. All right, well, thank you very much for sticking with us. Um, hit the like button. What the heck? What else you got to do? Let's rock and roll on the way out. Um, that's pretty astonishing is all I got to say. But thanks for sticking with us. We'll keep you informed. That is for sure. I mean, 